Welcome to Hammond Power Solutions presentation on utilizing active harmonic filters to mitigate current harmonics caused by three phase sources, most typically variable frequency drives. Here are the objectives of the presentation in utilizing active harmonic filters in common applications. The quality of electrical power is an important contributing factor to the development of any electrical system since almost everything is run by electrical power. Power quality has become a major concern for both utilities and their customers. Over 75% of the loads the power grid supplies are used to convert AC to DC power and are called nonlinear loads. Nonlinear loads present several issues for utilities and their customers since they contribute large amounts of harmonic current to the system which can disrupt power quality. For utilities, poor power quality can cause customer dissatisfaction and revenue losses. Harmonic currents require extra generation and power line capacity and significantly increase power system losses. Utilities will find companies if they cause power quality to fall below IEEE 519 limits as measured at the utility service entrance. For customers, the system disturbances caused by poor power quality can cause millions of dollars in production losses and damaged equipment. Anything that rectifies AC to DC power is a nonlinear load and produces current harmonics. The line side of a VFD is basically a DC power supply, and it's a classic three phase nonlinear load. Other large nonlinear loads can include inductive heaters, arc furnaces, welders, and large DC power supplies and chargers. Overall, nonlinear loads now make up the majority of all utility loads. Nonlinear loads cause issues for the utility, including power quality and higher line losses. Modern utility power meters increasingly allow utilities to monitor the added effects of nonlinear loads from individual users and allow utilities to charge penalties if a user exceeds harmonic values, typically referred to as IEEE 519. The input or line side of a VFD uses rectifiers and is basically a DC power supply. This creates current harmonics when it transforms AC to DC power. As a result, the harmonics distort what's represented here as the utility's perfect red sine wave to look like the distorted green wave. The VFD's input section also has sensors to monitor the incoming power and resultant DC bus voltage. Current harmonics can cause significant issues within a facility and if they exceed a standard called IEEE 519, the utility can find the user. IEEE 519, of which the most current version is 2014, is a document that establishes levels of voltage and current harmonic distortion acceptable to the distribution system based on the input transformer characteristics and the loads in a customer's facility. Many electrical consultants are including compliance with IEEE 519 2014 in their design specifications to help reduce harmonic problems and avoid penalties that can be opposed by electrical utilities. More information about the levels of harmonics can be found on the IEEE website, and we will talk more about it in the next slide. The rectification of AC to DC power causes harmonics. Harmonics can cause a number of issues, including increased transformer losses, increased failure of electrical power factor correction capacitors. Power factor correction capacitors attract harmonic currents, which can then damage and destroy the capacitors. Motors run less efficient, and wiring and cabling can overheat from the additional harmonic currents. This will lead to decreased electrical system capacity. Harmonic currents can cause circuit breaker and fuse tripping, and the malfunction of neighboring equipment such as communication errors or increased DC power supply failures. Utilities will find customers for power quality falling below the IEEE 519 threshold. Ultimately, utilities want to build customers for the actual cost of producing the power, also known as watts, not just the volt amps. IEEE 519 is recognized as the American national standard and is widely used in North America, especially in municipal public works markets. This standard details the recommended practices and requirements regarding harmonic control in electrical power systems. It outlines the current and voltage total harmonic distortion, or THD, that are recommended based on the input transformer's characteristics and the loads in a customer's facility. The current THD limits set by IEEE and followed by many specifiers and are clearly outlined in the tables. 
The point of common coupling is specifically defined as a point of connection between the utility and the customer. For the point of this discussion, IEEE 519 limits systems at less than 1,000 volts to 5% total harmonic distortion of the current. There are also limits for higher voltages and limits in the maximum content of each current, but we won't go over those in detail. One method to mitigate harmonic currents that are produced by three-phase sources, most commonly variable frequency drives, is to use an active harmonic filter. Active harmonic filters are very similar to variable frequency drive in the components that they have, but rather than power motors, they're designed to inject harmonic currents, which are equal but opposite, to the system's harmonic currents to cancel out these harmonics. Active harmonic filters are designed to meet IEEE 519 recommendations, and are usually combined with line reactors and DC link chokes at the variable frequency drive. Active harmonic filters compensates for multiple three-phase nonlinear loads. Single-phase nonlinear loads, like computer and DC power supplies and small chargers, must be mitigated with other devices like harmonic mitigating transformers. Active harmonic filters can also correct power factor to new unity and balance three-phase system currents. In addition, active harmonic filters compensates for all reactive currents and offers complete facility motor control center or individual equipment solutions. A good comparison for active harmonic filters is noise canceling headphones. To cancel the lower frequency portions of audible noise, noise canceling headphones use active noise control. They incorporate a microphone that measures ambient sound. A small speaker in each ear generates an audible waveform that is the exact negative of the ambient sound it wishes to cancel out for the undesirable noise. The headphone's microphone acts the same way the active filter's current transformers work. Rather than using speakers to generate an equal but opposite noise, active harmonic filters generate currents equal but opposite to the harmonic currents and inject those into the system. Here is a diagram of how an active harmonic filter works. The unit uses highly accurate current sensors to continuously monitor the current harmonics and instantly creates the current flow from its IGBT-based output module to make the resulting line current harmonic-free, balanced, and at unity power factor. Note that while an active harmonic filter can correct for power factor, it is often much more economical to create better power factor using capacitors. Active harmonic filters are often necessary to protect power factor correction capacitors from overheating. Power factor correction capacitors attract current harmonics, which can damage and destroy the capacitors if their harmonics are not mitigated. An active filter is placed in parallel with nonlinear loads in coordination with line reactors placed at each VFD. This is less costly and more flexible than using series place passive filters at each VFD. The line reactors help mitigate a portion of the current harmonics for less cost per amp than an active harmonic filter will. But line reactors can't mitigate the current's total harmonic distortion to below 5%. For that, the active harmonic filter is needed. The combination of an active harmonic filter and line reactors is less costly and much easier to specify and install versus multiple passive filters. It also is more flexible and provides more consistent results than passive filters over a wider range of loads. Active harmonic filters work best with a minimum 3% line reactor or DC link choke for each VFD. Line reactors help lower the total harmonic current, which also aids in being able to size a lower current rated and less expensive active harmonic filter. While not shown here, harmonic mitigating transformers phase shift harmonic currents, which can also cause harmonic current cancellation. HMTs are most often used to cancel harmonic currents caused by single phase harmonic sources, while active harmonic filters are used for three phase sources, most commonly VFDs. Multi pulse transformers are also often used with medium voltage drives, and they also do current harmonic mitigation. 18 pulse transformer technology is still sometimes used with low voltage VFDs, but it is largely being replaced with active harmonic filters. Active harmonic filters are wired in parallel to system power. An important concept to understand is active harmonic filters can compensate for harmonic currents found on the load side, also called the secondary side of a transformer. If there are multiple circuits on the transformer secondary, 
active harmonic filters can, can't compensate for harmonics in just one branch circuit. The active harmonic filter is going to try and correct all harmonic currents and all branch circuits and needs to be sized accordingly. If a system has multiple branch circuits and each branch circuit is powered by a separate transformer, an active harmonic filter found on the secondary of one of those transformers can't mitigate harmonics on other branch circuits supplied by the other transformers. The transformers help isolate what the active harmonic filter is going to work on. Power quality specifications are often found in water and wastewater installations. Also, critical applications such as hospitals, factories, and data centers, which have many three-phase nonlinear loads, which need to be corrected. Active harmonic filters are often deployed in remote locations or foreign installations where the local utility grid has less capacity or existing power quality issues. An example of this would be an oil field with multiple wells in a rural location with a power grid that was never designed to supply such large three-phase loads that produce harmonics. Active harmonic filters can be a good solution if IEEE 519 is required by the utility and most utilities now monitor for IEEE 519 compliance. Active harmonic filters can be used if over half of the load is VFDs or other three-phase nonlinear loads. If VFDs are involved, generally a minimum of 75 total VFD horsepower is needed before you would start to consider an active harmonic filter. Active harmonic filters can decrease the size of backup generators. Active harmonic filters can help protect power factor correction capacitors from being damaged by harmonic currents. Consider active harmonic filters if additional nonlinear loads are being added that could stress the current power system. We have already discussed the technology of active filters in previous slides. Passive filters are series filters which typically combine inductors and capacitors and sometimes resistors. A typical design is a reactor wiring series with the load and a shunt circuit using a tuning reactor and capacitors and sometimes resistors. Some passive filters have active components like contactors to disconnect the capacitance during low or no load conditions. Passive filters are wired in series, one for each VFD. Here is a simple chart on some differences between passive and active filters. Active harmonic filters offer several advantages over passive filters, including better performance over a wider series of loads. One active filter can cover multiple VFDs. This is very advantageous when a large number of smaller VFDs make passive filters impractical. Active filters offer better flexibility over passive filters, so they're easier to apply and to tune. An active filter are wired in parallel to the loads, so the loads won't be taken down if there are issues with the active filter. The biggest disadvantage active filters have over passive filters is the initial cost is often higher. Active filters can be sized on Hammond Power Solutions website at www.hammondpowersolutions.com. Once there, go to the product section and select filters. There are two helpful tools, a sizing questionnaire and a sizing estimator tool. Using the sizing questionnaire, collect the information needed for the size estimator spreadsheet. Once the questionnaire is completed, the information can be entered into the sizing estimator or it can be sent to Hammond Power Solutions where one of our power quality experts can review and provide a properly sized active harmonic filter solution. One item that is very useful to have when sizing an active harmonic filter is the one line diagram showing the circuit with the loads that need to be corrected. It is good to have a list of all of the loads and VFD sizes on that circuit. There are some important questions which need to be answered when using active harmonic filters. If there are power factor correction capacitors downstream of the active harmonic filters, that is between the active harmonic filter and the VFDs, they will need to be removed. Do VFDs have an integral DC link choke of at least 3%? Many VFDs below 10 horsepower do not have DC link chokes, so they will probably need to have line reactors. Do the VFDs have a line reactor? And if yes, what is the impedance? Are there spare loads that the active filter doesn't need to correct for, like across the line start motors or resistive heaters? Are there future loads the active harmonic filter will need to correct for, such as new equipment? And what is the current rating of the bus or cable the active harmonic filter will be wired to 
so the current sensors can be accurately sized. Other important questions that should be answered is, are is there a list of single phase loads downstream of the active harmonic filter? Will the active harmonic filter need to communicate over Ethernet or IP? What is the enclosure type of the active harmonic filter? And will the active harmonic filter be operated from a generator? And if yes, what is the generator size? Finally, are there any large soft start loads, also known as reduced voltage starters, that are downstream of the active harmonic filter? When the information on the sizing questionnaire is completed, the TrueWave sizing software can then be used to accurately size one or more active harmonic filters to successfully complete the application. This is an example of a printout of the sizing software that can be used to properly size the filters.